Welcome in England, in Birmingham, the second largest city in the United Kingdom. Birmingham was known for the thousands of small workshops practicing a wide variety of specialized and highly skilled trades. This brings us to the workshop we are today, the workshop of Yardolet. Nowadays, the craftsmen of Yardolet are working in a jewelry corner in a very special building. It is the former home of Scottish inventor, mechanical engineer and chemist James Watt. The pens and pencils made in this workshop are all made by hand, with sometimes a little help of a machine. The start of the production process is in the old safe that is in the building for over 100 years. In this safe all the parts are stuck that are needed to create all the pens and pencils. It's where we keep all our silver. We also have the older parts as well, which of course is very, very important. Again, as we spoke earlier, there's still older pens, making pencils for 93 years. There's certain shapes they need to be, so the newer ones might not fit, these will. To keep the originality, and that's the most important thing, is keeping the originality. The same with all the older parts, all the older tops is making sure we keep originality and that's why we still stock all older parts, even for pencils that are 70, 80 years old. All the pens and pencils of Yardolet have pointy noses, while they come in as a tube. To make that point, the swaging machine is used by the dices pressing against each other. The sterling silver tube reaches a certain temperature in the machine which allows it to deform. It is held by this mandrel which allows the tube to spin all the time. This way it can create a nice constant shape and taper the tube. This is all done by feel and eye. The process itself looks not that difficult, but... Once the silver goes into the machine, it's very easy to lose control. And it can spin and lose control and you can lose it and then it creates an off nose. And the moment that happens, that's it, it's scrapped. The machine used for this process for a long time with a company already. They were bought in the late 50s and early 60s. So the metal goes to the point, because of course you're squeezing the tube in, the metal has to go somewhere, so it goes to the point. With the drilling process, the noses are opened up again. So the reefer or lead goes through. During this process, the barrel is held by hand and the machine itself finds the middle of the barrel to drill the hole in the right place. This drilling has to be done twice or sometimes even in three steps. Also, in this process, the machine is not forced to do anything it doesn't want and the craftsmen have to put pressure on it by feel and experience. Half the job here that I've learned over the kind of the last 10 years is how is the metal reacting to the processes we're applying to it. And that is something you have to learn over a period of years, is knowing how far you can push the silver. The ballpoint pens and pencils are distinguished from each other because of the thickness of the hole. Not all the Yardolet writing instruments have a round shape. We've also had some other shapes before in the past, the Deco 34 and the 33. 34 is a square barrel, 33 is a triangular barrel. Uh, currently those are obsolete, so we're currently making the Diplomat, which has uh, been with us a very, very long time. Uh, one of my favourites, it just looks great, whether it's plain, whether it's barley, it just, you know, it just sums up kind of the yard lead really. Um, and I'll show you how we shape it here. The fly presses, again, all original to the company. This is just wear through people's hands. This is what hours and hours and years and years does to these machines. Only the tooling is renewed when it is needed, but the machines never let them down. All the tools are stored in this closet, from the new tools to the old tools, even from absolute models. They are stored just in case an old model needs a replacement part. So every single thing you see here 
it's all been made locally. It's all been made locally. All local guys, and, that, and that's kind of, again, a core belief of the company is we're in the quarter. If we can't find what we need here, then you know that it doesn't exist. <laughs> but no, it's it's we want to use local guys. You know, we like we want to, we believe in, you know, the the quarter. Uh, you know, it used to be a thriving place. Of course, things change, but there are still guys doing these types of work and still high quality and still producing what we need to do what we need to do. Back to the shaping. The sleeve that has been swaged and nailed it is slided onto the former of the flight press machine. The former is pushed up to the highest point. The dice is slided under the former. A little bit of lubricant is added on the nose of the silver which allows it to slide through. The dice locates itself in the middle of the former when it comes down nice and smooth. Once it is pushed entirely through the dice, a stripping tool is added and the former is pulled back up again until the formed silver loses the grip with the former and falls off the machine in a tray. Now the barrel is formed. The engine turning machines are from the late 30s, early 40s and still in production every day. These machines create a pattern on the writing instruments. There are two machines in the workshop. One is for the hexagonal shaped pens while the other one only does the round barrels. The machine works on a pulley system. It only works when the craftsman turns the wheel. It moves the machine upwards and downwards. Everything is done by hand. There is no button to be pressed. The machine copies the pattern bar. So whatever is on the pattern bar will be copied on the silver surface of the writing instrument. Initially, when the machine was bought, the machine would cut away the metal from the pen but not anymore. Since the 90s, a diamond tip was added and it pushing the surface only aside. This way you do not lose any weight of the silver. What I'm doing is just locating where that bottom is. So B, I'll lock it off. I will locate where the top is. Now I've set the top and the bottom I'm working with. Once the tip is touching the surface, the craftsman turns the wheel, which allows the barley pattern of the pattern bar to be marked on the silver surface. Once the top is reached, the diamond tip is put off the surface, the wheel that holds the silver barrel is turned for the next line. And this process goes on and on, till all the lines are made on the silver surface. Yordolet is famous for their hand-etched creations. Each barrel takes about half an hour till one and a half hour, depending on the size of the pen. Let's have a look at this process. First, the plain barrel fits on the mandrel to give it some support underneath the surface that is chased. From the chasing, you need a hammer and some chisels in a variety of shapes and sizes. For the Victorian pattern, a large chisel is creating the outer shape. The barrel is placed on a cloth and kept in place with a wire for a secure and fast process. Now the chisel is put in place and is hammered around the shape. From there it is built up to the other side to create a circle and is finished with a nice tail. To make this process more efficient, this whole process is done in stages. So first all the outer bits are done, down the barrel, then the circle and finishing up with the tail. Once all that is done on the entire barrel, a smaller chisel with a small dot pattern on it is used to fill all the empty spaces up to bring the pattern alive. Because of the way the pattern is made, it is very individual and can be seen as a handwriting of the artist. Each and every artist does it in a slightly different manner. It can be seen as a signature. Once all the spare parts are finished, they are put together. Here you see a Yardolet pencil, which is not assembled yet. From the barrel to the top, the clip and all the inner parts. The first step is to put the clip onto the barrel. This is done with the pressing machine. First the barrel slides over the former. Then the pressing machine is pushed down and the tool 
punch two little holes in the barrel, which hold the rivets afterwards. To make sure the holes have the right diameter, to fit the rivets, it is drilled out with a 1mm drill. The same is done with the holes in the clip, so they open up a little bit further. After the drilling we move back to the pressing machine. This time a different tool is used. This tool forms the rivets to a more circular shape, to keep it in place. First the rivets are cut down, so they are nice and straight. And with this tool the rivet is holed and brought into the barrel. The barrel is now slided over the former, which has a little groove in it, to keep the rivet in place. The clip is put on the top of the rivet and the pressing machine closes the rivet. This way the clip is secured on the barrel. And to secure it a little bit more, the rivet is also soldered from the inside of the barrel. The static solder uses a mixture of gas and air to make a nice flame for the soldering process. The flame has to be hot enough to melt the solder, but not too hot that it melts the silver. The craftswoman holds the piece with a cloth, because the material can get quite hot. Now the rivet is soldered on the inside of the barrel. To secure it even more, a few drops are also added on the edges on the other side. After this process, it is cooled down with water. To remove the top of the rivet on the inside, a small bar is turning very fast inside the barrel. This way the extra metal is removed with a high precision and the inside of the barrel is flat again. Now the internal parts are soldered together. First the brass nose cone is soldered onto the sterling silver middle piece. Now the brass lead holder needs to be soldered onto the brass nose coin. It slides over the silver, a ball is screwed at the end to keep the brass lead holder in its place during the soldering process and the piece is now holed with a cloth. Heat tends to travel a bit faster through the brass than the silver. So now I'm going to put more flux onto the end of here. Put it in the flame. and then put some solder on there, push it against here, so that, that will then be soldered to the nose cone as well. Now the brass inner part is pushed inside the silver barrel. Once it is pushed in its place, it is cooled down with water again. Now the internal mechanism is stuck inside the barrel. Now we're moving on to the lead holder and the slider. The little lead holder have to go into the slider. The slider is a brass tube with a small opening. That opening has to be opened up a little wider to get the lead holder into it and to grip inside the pen. To remove the rough edges after opening it up, it is filed down a little bit with some sandpaper. Now the lead holder can slide into the slider all the way to the bottom and a little cap is put on the top to avoid that from falling out of the slider. A little bit of metal has to be cut off that small cap. This is all done by hand as you can see here. Now the cap is pushed onto the slider and is soldered on this so it will stuck there forever. The silver inner bit of the pencil is sticking out a bit. This part needs to be removed and is saw off, so it is nice and flat. The next step is to put some graphite through the pencil. This lubricates the inner parts and stops them from going a bit rusty. The graphite is placed in the gap of the slider. Now the slider is put inside the pencil. The small part with the bumps will get in touch with the inner spiral and it can be brought all the way down to the pencil. They also twist it back up so the graphite can spread all the way through the inner system of the pencil. And all the excess graphite comes out after pushing the slider in and out the pencil quickly. Now the pencil is ready to take the 12 LEDs inside the 12 LED chambers. A special tool with a strong wire is going through all the chambers to make sure there is no dirt inside and opens it up a little. Now the LEDs should fit all in. When the LEDs are in, the twisting knob is put back into its place to make sure the LEDs do not fall out of the pencil. 
Now the LED slider is slided into the mechanism and as you can see a little bit of brass is still visible. To finish this up, a nice sterling silver cap is soldered on this part to make the pencil a nice finished product. Because the cap is soldered, it has some fire stains on it and this is polished off in the polishing room again. Now the slider with a nice silver cap on it slides into the pencil and the Yardolet pencil is completely finished. The only thing that needs to be done is a proper polishing and cleaning until it gets into the gift box. Yardolet uses four polishing machines, all for different stages in the production process. There is a larger, harder grease mop. It is a high speed mop, which go very fast. The reason for the high speed is to remove all the marks which are created during the swaging process. This is a very dirty and hot process, because the silver gets hot when the mop is turning so fast. The craftsman holds the silver into the mop and the fast moving mop is removing all the dirt and scratches from the material. After that it goes to a softer grease mop. This one is made for finishing products and uses a different kind of grease. The pencil is held to the mop which removes any marks on the surface the silver and the craftsman always checks in the light if there are no imperfections or dents in the silver. Once this crease is finished, the next process is a whitening. The whitening is basically a mixture of water and powder, which removes any grease that got stuck in the barley pattern. The whitening is put on the silver and covers all the surface. The pen is held onto the wristle mop and turned in between the fingers. And you get your hands, you get your hands dirty. <laughs> and you touch it. And also again with the barley, you've got to make sure that it's not rough to touch. So when you, you run it over your fingers, you should feel the barley, but it shouldn't be rough to touch. So you run your fingers over that. During the process, all those spare parts stay together because they are made for each other. A cap of a pen might not fit on another pen because they're all made by hand. It is all individual every single time. The rouge mop is the finishing mop. It uses a red rouge which is considered the best for the Yardolet writing instruments. The rouge is applied to the mop which is a softer mop compared to the previous mops used. The pen is held gently onto the mop and the mop is doing all the work to finish the product. And this is where my fingers stop touching the surface now because we've got to a point now where there'll be no more handprints, no more fingerprints, so my fingers do not touch the barrel or this cap again now. And I'm just checking now, there's no build up of any polish anywhere on that surface. Checking the hallmarks are all still in place. Checking that everything's all in place, everything's all still where it should be. When the craftsman is happy with the finished product, the nip is attached to the grip section. The nips are checked once they arrive from the nip supplier by the Yardolet experts. Once attached, they are checked again. Once the product is finished, it comes on the boxing table. The recognizable wooden gift box with the Yardolet embossing comes with a warranty guide which offers a lifetime guarantee on mechanical issues. A polishing cloth is also included in the gift box to keep the pens nice and clean. The pen is wrapped in anti-tarnish paper to protect it and it is put inside the box. The clip number on the cap is recorded. An anti-tarnish strip is also added to the gift box to stop the silver from tarnishing before the writing instrument gets to the customer. Now the Yardolet is ready to be shipped to Applebaum and from there to the end consumer. What we experienced in the workshop of Yardolet was something that we did not see before. There was no automatic machinery involved. Everything was handwork and passion for the writing instruments made here in Birmingham. When talking to the staff members, it was not talking about their job, but about the products that they love to create on a daily basis. And I think that every collector should consider a writing instrument of Yardolet in its collection. Thank you for watching our How It's Made video about Yardolet. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and let us know in the comments below what you think of the brand Yardolet.
拜拜。